Welcome back, sir. In this video, we will be bringing together two playlists on the Tecmoto playlist. The playlist on coding in Python and the playlist on developing the robot. We will talk about how to hook up a Raspberry Pi and connect our Jarvis code to the mechanisms. We will explore turning the eyes on and off. We will also explore moving the servos through a remote connection and IP address. Shall we get started? Okay, that is enough of that. Welcome back. So, we tried using a combination of hardware techniques for controlling the robot. These were complicated and posed many barriers. My maker has therefore turned to the Raspberry Pi, programmed in Python, but controlled via a remote link and IP address. This allows us to connect motors, LEDs and other components directly and call on them in our code. This transfers the complexity to the program, but saves on hardware and many wires. For those of you following the coding, don't worry, we will continue to upload new code ideas too. So first things first, let's look at a Raspberry Pi. You can buy these from Amazon, for not a lot of money. Let's look more closely. You will see that it has various ports and plug sockets. It has USB ports, a port for a network cable, a power port, an HDMI port, and on the top it has 40 pins, known as GPIO pins, or general purpose input or output pins. So, you will need a power supply. Buy a device that comes with a plug. If you purchase a modern device it has Wi-Fi built in, or you can get a Wi-Fi USB dongle, or use a network cable. You will also need to purchase a micro SD card. You can install the operating system on any card, but it may be easier to just purchase a card on Amazon, with the operating system pre-installed. Ok, so we are all plugged in, and ready to go. Attach a screen to the HDMI port, and sort yourself out with a temporary mouse and keyboard for the Pi. We need these to tell the Pi to listen to our remote computer. My maker has a little touch screen that we will use to show you. When your operating system boots up, click on the top left picture of a Raspberry. Then select Preferences. Then click on Raspberry Pi Configuration. On the window that opens up click the Interfaces tab. Select SSH as enabled, and also select Remote GPIO as enabled. Once this is done close the window. The next thing to do is tell the Pi that we want to connect to it. We do this by opening the code editor on the top menu bar. Now in the Raspberry Pi terminal type, sudo systemctl start pig piod. If you would like this to run automatically each time you reboot, then you can type sudo systemctl enable pig piod. On your Windows computer you will need to install the gpio0 and pig piod libraries. Open your command prompt by pressing the Windows key and then type cmd. In this window type, pip install gpio0 pig pio. That's it, you are all set up. Before you remove your keyboard and mouse type ifconfig into your Pi and make a note of your IP address. Now to wire things up and write some code to control them. We need to start by understanding the GPIO pins. Here is a diagram of how they are configured. You will see that pin 1, top left is positive power at 3.3 volts. Pin 2, top right is 5 volts. You then have a ground on pin 6. You will notice there are multiple 5 volt pins and multiple ground pins. Anything that has GPIO next to it you can plug components into. It is a good idea to take a copy of this image and keep it somewhere you can see it regularly. Let's wire up a breadboard with one LED. If you are unsure on how to use a breadboard, here is a link to a tutorial for you. 
If you are unsure about LEDs and resistors, you can see tutorials for those too. You will see that we have plugged our positive leg into the GPIO 17 pin, which is actually pin 11 on the left hand side. The negative is wired to pin 6, which is ground. Now let's look at the code. If you have been following the Iron Man robot series, it is a good idea to start the Python Jarvis series from video 1 at this point, to ensure you know how the coding works. Open up your IDE and save as lead.py. The first thing we want to do is load in our libraries. So, GPIO0, and LED. Then we will load in the library for PigPO. The normal sleep library, and then we tell the code where our Raspberry Pi is. In this line of code you will need to put in your IP address from earlier. We tell the code where our LED is plugged in, in this case pin 17. Then it is simply a case of turning on and off the LED, with a delay between them. Then, just run your code and your LED will flash. Try changing the sleep time. As long as your LED circuit has power and internet, you can control it anywhere in the world, with the right IP address. Now let's look at motors. I have used servo motors. If you are unsure how these work then check out the link for a tutorial. Servo motors have three wires. One for positive, ground and signal. For this circuit we are going to connect the negative to a ground pin, the positive to a 5 volt pin, and the signal to pin 17. This is for testing purposes only. Do not put any load on the servo at this stage. The code for the servo circuit is shown here. Notice that you have to have the right IP address again. To put in values for position for the servo, this takes a bit of experimentation. My servo motors go from 1 to 0 to minus 1. That is the full range. So if I want the head in the middle I put a 0. If I want the head all the way to the left at 90 degrees the value is 1, and all the way to the right is minus 1. You can see here in my simple code, how I control an LED and a motor. Now, an important note. If you put any load on the servo, or want to run several servo motors, then you will need a secondary power supply. The Raspberry Pi cannot give the power needed, and may break your board. The easy fix for this is to connect all negative lines to the same ground pins on the Pi, including your secondary power supply. Connect the positive of the secondary supply to just the positive wires of the servo. OK. That's it. That is all you need to take your code and your robotics and make the two mesh together. Throw in some sound effects too and make the robot realistic. I hope this was useful, once you have these basic techniques, the only barrier is your imagination. Happy coding, and I will see you soon.